and I got into an entanglement with August. What's good people and welcome to the world of Prince and today we will be sharing 7 tips from the Battle Royale game Spellbreak. But before we start, smash that like button as it helps my channel out a lot and hit that subscribe button if you want more content. Alright, without further ado, let's get it. First tip we're gonna start with is tip number seven, and that's adjust your settings. Now, I know a lot of people don't come here to adjust this a lot because they think it's gonna mess something up, but trust me, it's only gonna make it more personal for you. Um, I personally been messing with the horizontal and vertical look speed because it just adjusts the way I shoot my abilities and my gauntlet, or you know, the speed at which I can look to shoot. It just, you know, helps me out a lot. Um, I would definitely su suggest uh, going here. Uh, you, They don't have, um, personal mapping like you can't make the buttons personal as of yet like they don't have a custom adjustment uh, hopefully it's coming soon but you, you can go and look at their other defaults so I suggest you know going in there and messing with that and just making it personal the next tip is tip number six which is gauntlet choice and combination so we're going to start with the fire gauntlet so when you shoot the fire gauntlet in front of you it lingers and it leaves like a, um, a trail of fire you can use it with a uh, poison too and it can cause like this explosion uh, this is still with the um, fire gauntlet as the primary, and you can use that firewall, the alternate fire for the um, um, fire gauntlet. And you can call it like a poison wall, which is really helpful in fights. It's really good in fights. Um, here I'm using the frost um, gauntlet as primary, which is what I usually run. And you can use it in a lot of ways. You can call it a puddle, you can do it that way, you can uh, call it shock. You have um, the lightning gauntlet as um, your secondary gauntlet cause all those type of things here i'm using with rock and i'm just gonna cause the him to freeze if you see how i aim on the body if you shoot it it's frozen and he actually will be frozen he can't move so yeah you can shoot again if i was any good but i'm not oh, missed again so <laughs> that happened but you can use it like that i usually use frost to mostly get around that's why i have it as primary because you can basically be uh what's his name uh, Frozone from Incredibles and you can skate around and skate around really good. The only thing is uh, it's a drawback is that opponents can use that to uh, against you. They can like use their uh, um, lightning gauntlet and shock you or they can like do poison ahead of you and it uh, turns to puddles. It's just you know <laughs> it's awful but you gotta just be you know uh, cognizant of that. You gotta be aware and just check your surroundings and if someone's chasing you try to trick them up. You know don't be so predictable with your patterns try to go unpredictable uh, here again I'm gonna try it again Let's shoot it look frozen easy so you want to just choose which gauntlet is best for you you know here I'm using the poison gauntlet as primary and I'm just showing you how it's similar to the fire gauntlet where it leaves a puddle and you can just you know it, it'll leave a um, surrounding you know fire um, poison instead of fire so it's similar to it but they're different but they're a good combination, like very good. High damage, if you want, if you're looking for high damage, uh, you know, uh, close range or even mid range, I would choose those. Uh, here at the wind gauntlet, I don't use it too much, but it's useful. People use it on me, you know, you can use it to basically get a little extra uh, height, and you can use it to like, uh, you know, um, it's like uh, juking and jiving. Like you can go to the side with it. You can, well, not to the side, but you know, you can when you land, you can use that as extra mobility, basically. Uh, I usually run the frost gauntlet and just because you know like i said be froze on i mean who's going to do that so tip number five is keeping an eye on your cooldown so i'm going to show you in an actual match let's see here i'm dropping down Ooh, i don't have a shield on hate it searching everywhere for a shield can i find a shield shield's hiding from me Oh, two people are fighting. And this is what I always do. You go invisible instantly. You see somebody fighting, you instantly go invisible. Now, see my cooldown? Look at that. At the bottom, look at the bottom. It's six seconds. So I know in six seconds I can fight, but I'm going to be able to get out of there, you know, if it gets bad. Uh, that kind of didn't go bad. I think he missed his shot because he didn't do something. But 
there I am back invisible. He doesn't know firewall. You always want to do it in front of your opponent. And you see, I'm keeping an eye on that firewall cooldown as well. It's at 10. See there? But it's not going to matter because he's about to be out. But he's not. Changing his movements. He's being super predictable, which you never want to do. If you're in the middle of a fight and you're losing it, and you're trying to escape, you never want to go a predictable route. See here? Lack a little bit right there, but they were making their movements so predictable that I was just able to kill them very easily. Easy kill, easy kill. And shoot, this is my shots. This one is crazy. Watch this. Don't even try. Look. Watch. Out. That fire, once it gets to this level, um, you do a lot of damage. It, it, it uh, has like fire that comes out of the balls, the fireballs. <laughs> Watch this. To get into that tornado firewall as well. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. Look, she's about to kill herself. Watch this. <laughs> You want me to kill this or she killed herself? Unfortunate. The next tip is tip number four, which is choose your rooms and talents wisely. So, uh, when you before you start matching, you choose your class, you got the chance to choose your talent. When you press square, it gets you into your talents. And you have three to choose from mind, body, and spirit. You're looting, you're going to be fighting scrolls. And when you read a scroll, you're going to increase the level of your arm. Um, these, each one of these talents uh, so these are the categories here and you know you of course have to be to a certain level as a god as a primary to unlock you know all of these but these are just some that i have unlocked so uh first up is mine and you have a couple to choose from and keep in mind that you only have six talent points total so if you look to the right here it shows how much each um you know uh talents costing inside of uh, you know each mind body and soul we are on mind uh, this focus of mana costs one, so that's going to take up one inside of the talent point. So you got to make sure you balance it out so it doesn't uh, exceed six. Uh, I am running focus mana right now on mine because I have two other ones that I think are more important for my playstyle. Uh, so let's go on to body. And this is the reason why, because on the body, I have, um, well, this isn't what I run, but it, what I would usually run. 42. The reason I would run a 42 is that it creates a barrier every 60 seconds. And if you get the cooldowns, all, all three scrolls basically, um, it gets to 30 seconds. So it's really helpful in a fight. But that first shot, it automatically, uh, you know, you absorb the damage. It's just really helpful if that's your playstyle. But Spirit, what I usually run in that, uh, a lot of people like Vital Stone. And what Vital Stone basically does is that once you're uh, uh, killed in a fight, you revive. So with the, like what that person did in that, in that last match you saw, they turn like yellow and they you know you're invulnerable for um, a couple of seconds i'm not sure how many uh but you resurrect with 10 health so a lot of people use that what i use is recovery because what it does is it regenerates 50 percent of your health for 12 seconds um, and, it, and it increases you know as more you read the scrolls and it helps me out a lot especially when i'm getting caught in the ring it like does no damage because it's like doing you know 50 percent of that uh, and you know it comes back and you can you know do a, a health it just helps out a lot the next tip is tip number three which is always play as if someone was invisibly watching you and i'm that bitch like i'm that one i'm that one that's watching you invisibly it sounds creepy but i'm always the one watching you you know ready to right there kill you you know you always want to be aware because there is a rune in this game which is invisibility and you know it's a real thing so people are doing that they are invisible watching you waiting for their you know the best opportunity to uh, so you see here, this is, I'm just gonna, you know, damage her a little bit. Uh, no. See there? I'm gonna go invisible. And she thinks that, or, you know, she's not paying attention and she doesn't notice that I'm invisible right here. So she's trying to heal. Wrong thing. No. Wrong thing to do. Nope. So she's out. So you all wanna play as if someone's watching. So you wanna play around rocks. You wanna play around cover at all times even if you think you might be alone trust me you're not see like her nope what you doing oh got her ass so you always want to make sure that you know you are playing as if you don't see her she even saw me trying to heal no you want to play as if someone's watching you because there's someone that's playing like me and they're watching you and waiting before you do you know <laughs> let your guard down so they can go invisible and you know kill you if you have the room guard of course but that's what a lot of people run because it's like OP, it's like overpowered. It's like one of the, it's probably the best room to me. 
that's what I run usually. I usually run that or I use I'll run um teleport, which I think are they're both pretty good. Situational. Uh both of them really, but uh, you know, those the two I think are the best for my playstyle. Those are the two I run. So you always wanna play with cover basically. See they uh they weren't aware. And I'm just hitting my shots. I don't always hit them, but right now I'm just hitting all my shots. And you know they use that uh, vital stone. That's why it's good. Oh, but I'm hitting my shot, so you know, sucks for you. Tip number two is definitely you want to aim for where your opponent is going. You want to predict where they're going to go and basically play a guessing game and track their movements. When you shoot your gauntlets, like your abilities, you want to aim them for. You want to aim them for where you think your opponent is going to be. So you see here, when I'm shooting, I'm not aiming at him. I'm, pre I'm making a, um, a guess basically on what I'm predicting where I think he's going to go. You see here, I knew he was going that way. I, I felt it, so I keep, I kept, you know, predicting which way I thought he would go after that would land. But, you know, see here, this person was doing the same thing. So, uh, but that's the next tip. You want to definitely uh, shoot or aim where you think the opponent is landing. You see here, so that's why I, that's how I'm playing. So I, I'm going where I think he think I'm going to go, but I'm going the opposite way. This is basically what I'm doing. And it goes back to that last tip. You want to make sure you choose which rune is best. You see this one, this teleport is working perfectly right here. It's getting me away out of cover so I can regenerate and try to get some health back before I engage in this fight. This guy's pretty good. You see, he's on me pretty bad. And I thought I was gonna lose this fight, but I was like, let me stay in it and make sure I'm not being predictable with my movements. Um, so you see what he's doing as well is he's aiming what he thinks I'm gonna, uh, where he's aiming what he thinks I'm gonna go. You see, and he uses teleport, or I think he has teleport, and he's basically, we're, we're playing the same, the same game, basically I just outplayed him. Cause I was able to heal, it's, all, it's the only reason why. Healed, teleported out. I healed again to make sure, just in case he did more damage. I was trying to get as the most, most healing as I can. And that blue light is representing my um, my talent that I have for the every 60 seconds or, you know, however scrolls I got. I probably have, um, I got one, so it's like, I think it's every 45. You see, I'm shooting where I think he's going to go. That's why I'm getting him with the, my shots. And here he just, you know, was being predictable and got caught. And I wasn't gonna let him go. We had a fight, I was gonna kill him definitely. Now my number one tip for beginners uh, or anybody really is you want to stay in constant movement. Anybody who has ever played an arena shooter knows this. Like you know, I've been playing them since uh, I want to tell my age. But I've been playing since the '90s, so I've been playing a lot of arena shooters in my day. You know, Quake, a lot of games like that. So I'm used to it. A lot of people just don't know that you want to stay in constant movement whenever you're doing anything. So you see, when I'm moving, when I'm when I'm fighting anyone, I'm never staying still guy here he's staying still you never want to you want never you basically never want your feet to touch the ground or when they do you want to you want to always be trying to hop and get out of the way that's the best thing you can do within any fights and i guarantee you you will win at least 50 percent more of your fights if you're staying in constant movement um you see this person here i'm even staying in constant movement here the only time i'm not in constant movement is that if i think i'm around cover and this person i caught and i just caught them in a trap but yeah, you want to stay in constant movement. That's my number one tip, man. That's the number one tip I can give anybody, anybody who's trying to, trying to play it or, you know, struggling is just move more, basically. I know it sounds so simple, but for real, just move more and you will win a lot more fights. You will win way more fights if you just move a little bit more around constantly. Uh, with precision, of course, you're not just moving randomly, but you're moving in with intention. Like when you're moving, you want to make sure you hop one time, you know, you float, you know, you want to make it unpredictable for the enemy. Oh, guys, thanks for joining me for this video. This has been fun. Hit that subscribe button for more videos because I'm going to be having at least two per week. So make sure you don't miss those. It's been good and cute. Time for me to go. See you guys.